Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by Eccentric, the makers of the K-Box and the new K-Pulley. Guys, flywheel training's really grown in popularity of late, and although it's something that's been around for a while, the simple reason that it's grown in popularity is because it works. We've been lucky to have a K-Box in our weight room for the past three years, and we've seen some really great things when it comes to improving the athlete's ability to change direction, and then looking at our return to play protocols with different lower body injuries with the student athletes. The love-hate relationship that everyone has with the K-Box is now just going to grow more with the addition of the K-Pulley. The ability to do standing presses, pulls, rip-throughs, and knee drive exercises is just going to be another arsenal to our training and another addition to the love-hate relationship that our student-athletes have with the awesome tools that come from Eccentric. Go ahead and hop over to Eccentric.com today to check out what they have. Guys, I can't recommend it enough and I guarantee you won't be disappointed not just with the products, but with the awesome customer service that Eccentric provides. Hey, everybody. If you enjoy the podcast and the content that it provides, make sure you hop over and check out the all-new Strength Coach Network. The Strength Coach Network is the combination of the CVA SPS community and the Rugby Strength Coach community, bringing you what is sure to be the Internet's leading resource for continuing education for strength and conditioning professionals. Combining these two resources has allowed us to bring some of the best content from some of the best minds in the world together for your one-stop shop to better improve the continuing education for not just yourself, but your entire staff. Bringing together all of the lectures from the Rugby Strength Coach community, along with the lectures exclusively done for the Central Virginia Sport Performance community, and all the lectures performed at the Central Virginia Sport Performance Seminar, make this an absolute must for performance coaches around the world. The world-class lectures at the Strength Coach Network are not all that you'll see as well. The discussion in the forums and the support and the career guidance from some of the top practitioners in the world, from people all over the world, makes this an absolute must and a great place for you to network, learn, and grow as a performance professional. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com and use the code CVASPS, that's C-V-A-S-P-S, to get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. We're sure you're going to find great value in the Strength Coach Network and are really excited to have you involved. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com and use the code CVASPS to check it out today. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today, guys, we have an absolutely sensational discussion about the rehab and training continuum with Dr. John Russin. After a real quick intro, Dr. Russin is going to get right into his onboarding process and how he evaluates athletes and how he utilizes this to really drive buy-in with the, with the clientele he gets to work with. That leads us right into how he looks at training them and the importance of actually loading athletes to drive the adaptations that he's looking for and how that idea drives right back into how he's looking to evaluate the athletes he works with. We then get into the use of social media and how he's using that to, to educate and drive content and try to help us all make, uh, make ourselves better. You know, and this includes the role of, of development of their training programs and beta testing those ideas. Uh, this is really an awesome talk, guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Let's get right to it. Doc, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Jay, thanks for having me, man. Listen, man, I'm really excited about this one because when we can get people that, that can talk therapy and, and actually lift the weights a little bit, it's always fun to, to get it from the other side. So for like the three quarters of a human being listening to this who don't know who you are, can, can we just give them the quick Cliff Notes, Spark Notes version of uh, where you're at, how you got there, and what, what you're getting into now? Yeah, so I'm a sports performance specialist, and I really have uh, gotten into more of barbell sports sport in the last three to four years. So working with a lot of power lifters, uh, elite crossfitters, Olympic lifters. And previous to that, I spent a decade in professional sport and Olympic sport. So really having anywhere from uh, multiple gold medal Olympias all the way to uh, professionals in all nine American sports. So it, it's been a crazy transition now because I'm, I'm utilizing more of my actual education that I've never truly utilized to its fullest potential, which is in uh, exercise science, but also in physical therapy because I have a doctorate in physical therapy, but claim to fame is never having really treated a patient in my entire life, always working in the sports performance field. So 
you know, where I'm using a little bit of everything now in uh, more of like a co-management of all of our athletes, because really one of the biggest secrets in the industry is everyone's a little bit fucked up and we need to get them feeling better so they can actually achieve the goals is that they want to achieve. So that's where I'm at right now, man. I love that. And uh, yes, everyone is, whether it's physically or mentally or emotionally, a little bit fucked up when it comes to, I mean, even the coaches. Uh, <laughs> Especially the coaches. That actually makes up a lot of my uh, a lot of my clientele are professionals in the field. So we've got a lot of coaches, high-end athletes, and personal trainers. So they're, they're maybe the worst of everybody. I love it. Yeah, so now let's talk about that. So when we're talking about people that are dinged up, and a guy who, who wears both hats simultaneously. Let, let's talk about your onboarding process a little bit. How do you, when you bring somebody in and they're coming to work with you, what are, what's step one? What are we looking at to make sure that we can identify what actually is the problem? And then how does that impact how you're handling them as an athlete? Well, I'm, I'm a pretty anal fucking guy. So when it comes down to the onboarding process, uh, we have some in-depth intake. So I literally want to know every single move that athlete or that client has taken in their life, not only in their training, but actually in their life. So we do a huge amount of intake from medical, from social intakes. We try to get as much data point as possible before we have that first conversation. And you know what? That first conversation is maybe the most important. So, you know, somebody would call it a subjective history. I really just want to have an authentic conversation with an athlete to see where their buy-in is, to see if we can have success with them. And that goes anywhere from maybe an hour all the way up to something like five or six hours is what, uh, you know, some of my tougher clients will be taking on that conversation. And I'll preface this by saying, you know, this day and age, my point in my career, I have the time to spend, you know, an entire day with somebody, you know, previous to that, I didn't. So usually this intake process takes about two and a half hours, you know, for the first 10 years of my career. Now I have the time to really, really draw it out as much as I want in order to really get the results that I'm after with those people. That's sensational. And the ability to be able to be so selective is probably able to allow you to make some pretty significant alterations to not just performance, but lifestyles. It's interesting because, um, you know, I always say, you know, nobody's coming to me because everything's fucking great in their life. You know, like shit's falling apart, whether it is they're plateauing their lifts, whether they can't stay healthy enough to get paid on the field. You know, something's not going well to the point where they're looking to make some drastic changes in the way that their body's functioning in the way that they're going to go out and perform. So usually I don't have a whole lot of trouble with, with the buy-in of some of these high, higher profile uh, coaches and athletes coming to me because you know what, they've been to everybody else before and this is kind of their last stop. But being more selective, it is cool. But it, one, of the, one of the biggest advantages that I've had my entire career is that I was a high-end athlete myself. Uh, I grew up around division one and professional athletics my entire life. So working with, you know, somebody that makes $20 million on the field, you know, it's just another dude to me. Uh, that's one of the biggest problems that I see coaches have is like, oh, I want to train professional athletes. It is the only thing. It's the best thing. And then when they finally get the opportunity, it's like they're like treating Elvis or something. You know, it's just another fucking guy. And if you can treat them like that and you can get them what they need – you're going to have more respect. You're going to get better results for it. And that's even something that we do today with even some of these barbell legends that are currently on my training roster. That's awesome because I'm sure, too, that's a breath of fresh air for, for the athletes in general as well. It is. It is. Uh, you know, these guys have spent their entire lives. You know, if you're in the NFL, you're a starting quarterback in the NFL, you've probably been a stud since you've been 12 years old. You've been in a leadership role. You've been having people kiss your ass. You know, you don't need that anymore. You need somebody that's going to be real with you. You need somebody that is going to literally look at your performance, look at your lifestyle for what it is, because when it comes down to it, that's how you make money. That is your career. That is your entire legacy on the line and how you're functioning. So you got to be real with that. Yes. And then when they are real with that and you're real with them with that, that next conversation into getting things going, how then, once you've made that, is that buy-in when it comes to them being kind of with John at that point? 
you know, it, it goes right into the gym. Um, you know, years ago, we do more of a standardized objective assessment. But, you know, the last couple of years, I really want to look from like a 30,000 foot view down, a bird's eye view at people's form and function. So if they're an athlete, especially barbell sport, I want to take them right into the gym. I want to get them into positions that I have them programmed for, you know, 50, 100, 150 reps per week. I want to see those positions. So we look at, um, I still use the FMS, the functional movement screen, but from there, we really look at the actual foundational patterns. We look at the big lifts that they're going to have to do for their sport. And then we reverse engineer from that standpoint. Whereas previously in my career, you know, I've been taught to do something at a doctorate level is that you take all these measurements, you get all these tiny little data points, and then you build it back up. From my performance mindset, I like seeing performance and then grading it back, scaling it back, and getting it more isolative in terms of pain provocation, dysfunctions, or you know, weak links in the kinematic chain that we want to strengthen, whether it be for performance or injury prevention. So, you know, I've done both things, but this day and age, I like to get people in. If they're going to bench press in competition, I like to see their bench press. You know, if anyone's watched the Fixing Dave Tate project, one of the first things that we did was like, Dave, you know, I just want to see you train right now. We did a squat session. I was literally just a fly on the wall. And I saw some serious things that just led to the next 10 months of, uh, of gains through some of our programming strategies for him based on that single session. Yes. And that actually, like, the, those initial posts, those were, they were on Instagram and on Dave's site. Like, the breakdowns were really awesome. Like, that was some, some really cool stuff. It, it was intriguing because um, a little background on that story is that, you know, I was going to work with Dave no matter what. And I showed up in Columbus and he just happened to have his video guy like, you know, twiddling his thumbs that day. And he's like, hey, you want to make this like a, a documentary? All right. As long as we can get the work done. So a lot of it is like literally fly on the wall with the cameras, um, which made it really intriguing for people to watch because, you know, everyone's watching Instagram, they're watching Facebook videos, they're going on YouTube and everything's just so scripted to the camera. You know, this shit was as raw as it gets. And if you want to know what a session is like me, if you want to know what it is to be coached by me or to be Dave living in his body, you know, there's 18 hours of gold standard free content, fly on the wall based content out there that I literally think has changed the industry. I couldn't agree more. And I think that if you were to tell me, gosh, what was it? it was 15 years ago, almost when I was sitting there in the, in those old, like, powerlifting conjugate method seminars with Dave and Jim that <laughs> Dave Tate yeah. was going to have a, a Gary Vaynerchuk like uh, video crew. <laughs> I probably would have told you you were nuts. It, it's unbelievable to see that because I grew up uh, reading some of Dave's stuff. You know, he was an early, early disciple of the T nation and it, it's kind of weird, you know, just when I say like, you know, you don't get starstruck. It's not like I'm starstruck by Dave, but I, I remember uh, it was four years ago I met Dave for the first time. And it was like, man, this fucking guy is a uh, pretty prime time right now. But, you know, after one or two conversations, you realize, like, there's a reason why people are who they are. Um, you know, being out in the professional sports, uh, spending a lot of time in Southern California in my career, having like almost like this movie star mentality to them. It's like they have the ability to have something on their mind and dial it up and actually say it in a way that really resonates with people. And I think that's one of the more powerful things that Dave has at its advantage, but also something that's helped me in my career too. It's like everyone has the mind to say what they believe in, but can you actually say it? <laughs> can you actually get it out there? Can you actually be the person that you want to be or you that you know that you are? That's the biggest thing that I see with Dave. You know, he is who he is. He is one of the most authentic people and from a role modeling standpoint, man, it doesn't get much better than that. No, no doubt. And I think that even more on top of that is he's one of the realest people too when it comes to like actually doing the things that he says when it comes to giving back and when it comes to educating other coaches. Like When he and I spoke on this show, I mean, that's, that's how we ended it. I'm like, Dave, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you, man. Like, like, and that's 100% true. Like, he's one of the people that drove me 
to want to be a better coach. I mean, I, shoot, I can remember going to work on Sundays and reading his training log and X and 62s and like, you know, back before, you know, when, when you had to go into forums to talk to people when it couldn't just be on social media, sure. you know, like it was, uh, he, he changed the world that we live in. I think more than anyone gives him credit for. I, I think so too. And I think you have a, a deeper reach when you're in an industry like ours, especially when you think about the actual coaches, not the pretenders on fucking Instagram, but the actual coaches doing good work with athletes and their clients. I'm talking about the professional coach. Any professional coach in the world would know Dave's name. You know, one of my goals with education and getting out there and working more and more on trying to get information in front of people, systems in front of these people, is to help that professional coach. I honestly had more pride doing the work with Dave, doing the work with some of these other guys that are deep within the industry than I would with an NFL All-Pro or a gold medal Olympian. Uh, maybe that just means that I'm a fucking meathead, but it also means that you need to know your demographic. You need to know where you stand and you need to know where your reach is going to be best. But man, you said it. You, know, you could go you – know, I've taught in continents across the world – Every single person will know Dave's name for a reason because he put a stamp on. But he put a stamp on in such a good way that he targeted his audience because he targeted people that were like him. And he didn't care that if people didn't believe in his shit, it doesn't matter. That That's a powerful thing. You know, cut somebody right in the middle. Either you love me or you hate me. But the people that love you, they are going to support you and you're going to do good things for those people. I think that's so important. No, couldn't couldn't agree more. And I think, I mean, to be blunt, I think that your Instagram feed is really a lot like that. It's like a 21st century, like <laughs> Dave Tate sharing, giving back. I mean, no, there, there's fantastic stuff. And I have to ask this because a lot of that does kind of move away from, you know, what you would typically consider like PT type stuff on, right. on, on the internet. So, what drives you when it comes to your content? Like when you're building these things and looking at these things that you're putting out for coaches to help better themselves, like what, what drives those decisions and what is the direction finder that you have when it comes to the things you're putting together? It's the easiest uh, answer in the world because my Instagram is authentic as it gets because that's literally us training as a team. So every day, my, my coaches and I, we all train together uh, at our facility. So every single time we're beta testing a new program, we got some new methods that we're working on. But we're also going balls to the wall. We're training hard and we're trying to get results. You know, one of my biggest pet peeves out there is like the trainer on social media or the corrective exercise guru bullshitter. And they sit there and they demonstrate this stupid exercise that they literally just made up on spot. And it's not designed to really do anything. It's designed to like boggle people's minds because they've never seen it before. You know, when we look at driving content, number one, it's not just about that video. Every single video that we shoot, if I don't have the ability to have somebody take action upon it, like I'm not going to put it out there. So every video is a lead into something that's a four to 6,000 word article with another 50 videos on it. You know, I, I want to send people to ultimate resources. And that's what we do. You know, over my career of last five years, we have over 1,200 published articles. I want people to read the articles because that's where we gain knowledge. We don't gain a knowledge through 15, 30 second videos on Instagram. We don't gain knowledge through two sentences of reading on Instagram. We gain knowledge through actually deep diving into the concepts, getting an appreciation for them, utilizing them yourself, and then trying to scale them for your athletes and your clients. So, Really what the Instagram feed is, is essentially my own training, the training in the beta test groups that I'm running. And I want to showcase that I'm not just going through the motions. I'm training hard. I'm pushing myself because you know what? You are your own first client. If you can't practice what you preach, then you might as well quit as a fitness professional. You know, that's all we have to our credibility. You know what? If your methods are that great, if you believe in what you're doing so much, you better be getting results with it yourself, period. That's a bold statement, and I love it because it, it's, it couldn't be 
closer to the truth in that we've got to be able to do what we're saying. Because if you can't, I mean, just for the demonstration aspect, but if you don't believe in it actually, like, to your soul, like, how are you going to get, how am I going to get some 6'11", 230-pound kid to squat if I'm not able to sit there and put the bar on my back? There's a big difference between theoretically trying to mind fuck yourself and go, oh, yeah, this would potentially work and going in and saying, hey, I think this may work. I'm going to use it with myself. I'm going to use it with a beta test group. I'm going to use it with early adopter athletes, and then I'm going to widespread it. That process doesn't take 15 seconds of scrolling on Instagram. For me, that process takes 18 to 24 months. So when I come out with a program or if I read an article, it's not something I made up the week before or the day before. It's something that I've literally been utilizing for years, and I've been doing it on a large scale with enough data pool, a big enough subject line that I can definitively say this is going to help a majority of people that are going to go in and try to utilize it. Yes, I love it. And I love the fact that you've got a, a step-by-step process as to how you're going to get that into your athletes. It's not like whether you see some people where it's like the new cool thing that they see on Instagram today. The next thing you know, right. you've got your, you know, your starting freaking quarterback doing whatever, you know, Billy showing on Instagram. It's like, cause right. this is cool. It, it, it's interesting though, because, uh, you know, just me from a physical perspective, I am not the biggest guy. I'm not the strongest guy. I'm not the most athletic guy, but I'm pretty good across the board and everything meaning that I can really test everything myself. You know, I can test dynamic work, uh, you know, speed work, track work. I can test heavy squats and deadlifts and different variations there. I can do all these things because I'm 100% healthy, I'm resilient, and again, I have the goal to maintain longevity and get stronger, bigger, and more athletic and resilient the rest of my life. So when you have those kind of uh, when you have those kind of holistic goals, those holy grail goals is what we call it with our with our clients. It's easy to be one of your own avatars. But you know, I totally respect if uh, you know if you're a huge specialist, say you're you know a world class power lifter, you have to put 900 on your back in competition. You know, you may not be doing some of the dynamic track work. Or, you know, again, if you're a marathon runner, you might not have one RMs on your body two to three times a week. But it's put me in a very intriguing position for essentially being able to coach a ton of people currently on some of our online programs because I'm literally the middle of the pack on everything. I'm one of the best people to start this process of, hey, I think this may work, so I'm going to start it with myself and then scale it up over 18 to 24 months. Uh, I'm in a good position to do that because it's not always been that way. You know, early on in my my baseball career, I spent the vast majority of my games on the bench because of injury. You know, I played uh, baseball, basketball, and football in high school at an extremely high level. And then I had multiple scholarships and multiple sports to go division one. And I ended up playing baseball in college, but literally my entire high school and college career up until the point where I was literally forced to move on from the sport, I always had injury problems. So today being able to beta test any type of method out there to better my athletes and my clients, it's something that I, I literally put my hat on because I've really had to work hard to get into that position to actually make it happen for them. You know, I think the one thing that I find as a commonality between a lot of people that not only work at a high level, but give back as much as they can to the field are people who have gone through and been the the dinged up athlete their whole career. No doubt, man. It's uh, it's something that shapes you. Uh, the first time I was ever in a weight room, I was 16 years old. My, my dad dropped me off at the weight room and he said to the strength coach that was working the gym at the time, he's like, John's not going to train. He's going to just stand in the corner. I want to see him or I want to get him in front of Division One athletes to see how they train. And this was over at the University of Buffalo at this time. I'm originally from Niagara Falls, New York. So I sat in the corner of that weight room at 16 years old. And I watched the coach work that single day. And I was there for the next six months standing in that same corner. After about six months, the coach threw me a dowel. And I was able to start training literally with a Division I weight room at that time as a high schooler, you know, almost done with my sophomore year. 
and literally scale up to the point where I put on 25 pounds of muscle. I dropped my 60 yard dash down 0.2 seconds, which is a shit ton for a kid that age. And literally training changed my body. It changed my trajectory of my athletic career. And I knew it was something that I wanted to do. But one of the biggest advantages that I had was I never, I never saw poor coaching. You know, I was seeing world-class coaches coached from the first time that I knew what strength and conditioning was all the way up to the point where I knew better when I got into some of uh, the injury problems because, you know, I was under poor training methods, you know, with different coaches then. And, you know, I was struggling for the wrong reasons. But, you know, even with my my last, my final injury, I, I tore my UCL and my my arm. So my lateral shoulder elbow stability is basically nothing, but never went in for surgery for it. My rebuilding process, not for baseball, but for life started at about 20 years old when I had to redshirt after that injury. And I rebuilt in the weight room. I didn't rebuild in a physical therapy office. I didn't rebuild getting adjustments. I didn't rebuild with an ultrasound on me. I rebuilt my movement patterns. I tried to restabilize everything. I did it over a 12 month period. And that was really the thing that set the tone for the rest of my career because essentially what I did with my own body at 20 years old with the help of some amazing strength coaches is what my goal is to do with all the clients and all the athletes that I work with today. I love it, man. I didn't know you were an upstate New York guy. Where'd you do your undergrad? So I had jumped around. Uh, another claim to fame is I actually did four schools in four years and I graduated cool. with a uh, exercise science degree in three of those years. So I uh, started at St. Bonaventure University, which is in downstate New York, yep. uh, kind of near the Erie PA border. Good old went to university. Yeah, exactly. Went to University of Rhode Island after that, transferring into a top 25 school uh, after a good freshman year uh, at Bonaventure because there's no transfer policy. Ended up getting hurt at URI and transferring back to the old alma mater, which is University of Buffalo. And then uh, after that, I stayed in Buffalo for graduate school, and I went to Damon College. Awesome. Yeah, I grew up in Rochester, did my undergrad at SUNY Cortland, so I'm like... There you go. Yeah, All so right. You just... I, I ran away from winter. You're staying with some some pretty good weather up there. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's cold, man. It, Wisconsin's a different level of cold. You know, Buffalo had the snow, but Wisconsin's that bone-chilling cold. You know, like that negative 10 that feels like negative 50. It's like... You're still in America. It's not Antarctica. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I don't know. Cause it's, uh, <laughs> right. Right, right now it's like 40 degrees here and people are talking about how, how brick it is outside. And I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, it's terrible. <laughs> but listen, man, let's, let's get out on this because, you know, you guys do a lot of really good stuff when it comes to content. But you're also trying to educate coaches and practitioners better Let's talk about some of the stuff that you guys are doing with that because, I mean, obviously with all that we do, like that's really important to me. So to make sure that we get, we get some information out there to people about, you know, these, these courses that you, you guys do, I think is really important. Yeah, I mean, one of the most shocking things that I learned last year was our website is one of the most popular websites websites in health and fitness owned by a single person. So the drjohnrussin.com, uh, to say it lightly, like we get a shit ton of traffic and a shit ton of attention, but you know, it's been well earned through quality content over the years. But the number one statistic that literally blew me away from actually doing a deep dive on our site was 73% of our readers and our fans over there are fitness or healthcare professionals, meaning that the personal trainers, strength coaches, physical therapists, chiropractors, athletic trainers, 73%. So this blows me away. So we got three out of every four people that are going to our site is actually one of the people that we're talking about, a professional trainer in the industry. That made me so happy because that's who we're trying to serve. So each and every week, I mean, we have brand new content that comes out. I don't say they're blog posts because they're not. You know, there are multiple thousand word articles with every sort of resource possible on these things. And they're deep diving on the subjects that nobody else wants to touch. So we get in uh, on the nitty gritty stuff, but we also scale it to the point where we're not only having programs over there, like my best selling FHT program. We've had over 15,000 people go through that 12 week program successfully. 
But now we've transitioned into our two-day seminar series as well. So uh, the pain-free performance training system, it's my blueprint. It's exactly what we did with Dave. It's highlighted around the dynamic warm-up process, the screening assessment, and the programming of the six foundational movement patterns. We've been doing that. We've done 20 dates worldwide this year, and we're planning on doing a handful of dates next year again worldwide. And, you know, it's funny that we've been talking about Dave because the next stop is going to be at the legendary S5 compound at Elite FTS in December. But, you know, we're going to be bringing this to a couple other cities into Europe, over in Australia, and a couple in America next year as well. I love it. And with all you're doing to help us all be better, man, I, I can't thank you enough. It's absolutely fantastic. And to, to say that what you're putting out for free to begin with <laughs> um, is not invaluable would be an insult. I, John, I can't thank you enough for all that you're doing to help all of us be better and, and for spending the time with us today. This is, this is fantastic, man. Thank you so much. Oh, man, this was a fun one. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, man. Well, listen, this will this will be live here soon. People are going to love it, and, uh, and we'll be in touch real soon, brother. Can't thank you enough. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, bro. Yeah, man. Cheers. And a huge thanks to Dr. John Russin for taking the time to be with us today. Guys, open, honest, candid sharing. I mean, what else would you expect from a man who's putting out some of the best content on the internet right now, really trying to drive education, trying to help people be better, uh, for us to be better for our athletes, for us to be better training ourselves. Uh, I cannot thank John enough for everything that he's doing, you know, to help all of us be better at what we do. So John, kudos, hats off to you, man. This was an awesome, open, candid con uh, conversation, and I can't thank you enough for your time for this show and for everything you're doing for us to make us better. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed the talk, please share it through the social media outlet of your choice, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. Again, we're just trying to get the best content out there that we can to all the great coaches possible. So if if you know somebody that could take something from this talk, please shoot it at them on Twitter, send it to them in a DM, email them the talk, whatever it is. Again, we're just trying to get the best information out there to all the fantastic coaches that we possibly can. And as always, guys, thank you for everything that you do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We will be back next week with another awesome guest. We will see you then.